the Katas Tasan, Kagaling Galangan, Katipunan ng Mga Anak ng Bayan, Supreme and Venerable Society of the Children of the Nation. Spanish, Suprema y Venerable Asociación de los Hijos del Pueblo, also known as Katipunan, or KKK was a Philippine Revolutionary Society founded by anti-Spanish colonialism Filipinos in Manila in 1892. Its primary goal was to gain independence from Spain through a revolution. Documents discovered in the 21st century suggest that the society had been organized as early as January 1892 but may not have become active until July 7 of the same year, that was the date that Filipino writer José Rizal was to be banished to Dapitan. Founded by Filipino patriots Andres Bonifacio, Teodoro Plata, Ladislao de Waugh and others, the Katipunan was a secret organization until it was discovered in 1896. This led to the outbreak of the Philippine Revolution. The Tagalog word, Katipunan, literally meaning association or assembly, comes from the root word, Tipon, a Tagalog word meaning gather. Being a secret organization, its members were subjected to the utmost secrecy and were expected to abide by the rules established by the society. Aspiring applicants were given standard initiation rites in order to become members of the society. At first, membership in the Katipunan was only open to male Filipinos, later, women were accepted into the society. The Katipunan had its own publication, Kalayan, Liberty, which issued its first and last printing in March 1896. Revolutionary ideals and works flourished within the society, and Filipino literature was expanded by some of its prominent members. In planning the revolution, Bonifacio contacted Rizal for his full-fledged support for the Katipunan in exchange for a promise to rescue Rizal from his detention. In May 1896, a delegation was sent to Emperor Meiji of Japan in order to solicit funds and military arms. The Katipunan S. Existence was revealed to the Spanish authorities after a member named Teodoro Patino revealed the Katipunan illegal activities to his sister, and finally to the mother portress of Mandaluyong Orphanage. Seven days after the Spanish authorities learned of the existence of the secret society, on December 26, 1896, Bonifacio and his men tore up their cedulas during the cry of Balintawak that started the Philippine Revolution of 1896. Etymology The name. Katipunan comes from the full Tagalog name for the society. Katas Tasan, Kagaling Galing Katipunan ng Mga Anak ng Bayan. Supreme and Honorable Society of the Children of the Nation. The Tagalog word, Katipunan, literally meaning, association, or assembly, comes from the root word, Tipon, a Tagalog word meaning, gather. Formation History The Katipunan and the Cuerpo de Compromisarios were, effectively, successor organizations of La Liga Filipina, founded by José Rizal, who himself was inspired by the martyrdom of his predecessors, the nationalist priests, Gómez, Burgos and Zamora. This organization was part of the late 19th century propaganda movement in the Philippines. The founders of the Katipunan were Deodato Arellano, Teodoro Plata, Valentin Diaz, Ladislao de Waugh, Andres Bonifacio, and José Dizon. Katipunan founders Bonifacio, de Waugh, and Plata were all members of La Liga and were influenced by the nationalistic ideals of the propaganda movement in Spain. Marcelo H. del Pilar, another leader of the propaganda movement in Spain, also influenced the formation of the Katipunan. Modern-day historians believe that he had a direct hand in its organization because of his role in the propaganda movement and his eminent position in Philippine masonry. Most of the Katipunan's founders were Freemasons. The Katipunan had initiation ceremonies that were copied from Masonic rites. It also had a hierarchy of rank that was similar to that of Freemasonry. Rizal S. Spanish biographer Wenceslao Retana and Filipino biographer Juan Raimundo Lumawag saw the formation of the Katipunan as Del Pilar's victory over Rizal, La Liga dies, and the Katipunan rises in its place. Del Pilar's plan wins over that of Rizal. 
Del Pilar and Rizal had the same end, even if each took a different road to it. Founding of the Katipunan Captured Katipunan members, also known as Katipuneros, who were also members of La Liga, revealed to the Spanish colonial authorities that there was a difference of opinion among members of La Liga. One group insisted on La Liga's principle of a peaceful reformation while the other espoused armed revolution. On July 7, 1892, writer Jose Rizal was banished and exiled to Dapitan in Mindanao. That night Bonifacio, a member of the La Liga Filipina, with Plata, Dewa, Diaz, Arellano, and Dizan, founded the Katipunan in a house on Azcaraga Street, now Recto Avenue, near Elcano Street in San Nicolas, Manila. They established the Katipunan when anti-Spanish Filipinos had realized that societies such as the La Liga Filipina would be suppressed by colonial authorities. Despite their reservations about the peaceable reformation that Rizal espoused, they named Rizal as honorary president, without his knowledge. The Katipunan, established as a secret brotherhood organization, was known as the Kataz Tossing, Kagaling Galandin Katipunan ng, Mg, A Acute Anak ng, Bayan, Supreme and Venerable Society of the Children of the Nation. The Katipunan had four aims, namely, to develop a strong alliance with each and every Katipunero, to unite Filipinos into one solid nation. To win Philippine independence by means of an armed conflict or revolution. To establish a republic after independence. The rise of the Katipunan signaled the end of the crusade to secure reforms from Spain by means of a peaceful campaign. The propaganda movement led by Rizal, Del Pilar, Jaina and others had failed its mission, hence Bonifacio started the militant movement for independence. Organization Administration The Katipunan was governed by the Supreme Council Tagalog, Kataz Tossing Sangunian. The first Supreme Council of the Katipunan was formed around August 1892, a month after the founding of the society. The Supreme Council was headed by an elected president, Pongulo, followed by the secretary, secretaries, Kaliham, the treasurer, Tagaynat Yaman, and the fiscal, Tagasig. The Supreme Council also had its councillors, Kasinguni, the number varied through presidencies. To distinguish from presidents of lower Sangunian or councils below, the president of the Supreme Council was called the Supreme President, Tagalog, Kataz Tossing Pongulo, Spanish, Presidente Supremo. At the outbreak of the 1896 revolution, the council was further reorganized into a cabinet, which the Katipunan regarded as a genuine revolutionary government, de facto and de jure, in each province where there were Katipunan members, a provincial council called Sangguniang Bayan was established and in each town was an organized popular council called Sangguniang Balangay. Each bayan and balangay had its own set of elected officials, Pongulo, President, Kaliham, Secretary, Tagasig, Fiscal, Tagaynat Yaman, Treasurer, Pangalawang Pongulo, Vice President, Pangalawang Kaliham, Vice Secretary, MGA Kasinguni, Councilors, Mabalasig, Terrible Brother, Talaba, Guard, Maniningal, Collector, Auditor, Tagapamahala ng Basahan ng Bayan, Custodian of the People's Library, Tagapangasiwa, Administrator, Manunulat, Clerk, Tagatulong sa Pagsulat, Assistant Assistant Clerk, Tagalon, Warden, and Tagalibot Patroller. Each Balangay were given a chance to expand their own spheres of influence, through triangle system in order to elevate their status to Sangguniang Bayan. Every Balangay that did not gain Sangguniang Bayan status were dissolved and annexed by greater provincial or popular councils. The towns, cities which supported the Katipunan cause were given symbolic names, such as Magdawing, to celebrate for Noveleta, Magdalo, to come for Kawit, Magwagi, to win for Naic, Magtagumpay, to succeed for Maragondon, Wilangtanag, never diminished for Indong and Halig, Wal, for Imus, all are in the province of Cavite. Within the society functioned a secret chamber, called Camara Reina, which was presided over by Bonifacio, Jacinto, and Pio Valenzuela. This mysterious chamber passed judgment upon those who had betrayed their oath and those accused of certain offenses penalized by Katipunan laws. Every Katipunero stood in fearful awe of this chamber. According to José P. Santos, throughout the existence of the secret chamber, about five Katipuneros were convicted and sentenced to die by it. The death sentence was handed down in the figure of a cup with a serpent coiled around it. History of administration 
In 1892, after the Katipunan was founded, the members of the Supreme Council consisted of Arellano as president, Bonifacio as controller, Dewa as fiscal, Plata as secretary, and Diaz as treasurer. In 1893, the Supreme Council comprised Ramon Basa as president, Bonifacio as fiscal, Jose Turiano Santiago as secretary, Vicente Molina as treasurer, and Restituto Javier, Riccio Pantas, Teodoro Gonzalez. Gonzalez, Plata, and Dewa were councillors. It was during Basa's term that the society organized a women's auxiliary section. Two of its initial members were Gregoria de Jesus, whom Bonifacio had just married, and Marina Dizon, daughter of José Dizon. It was also in 1893 when Basa and Dewa organized the Provincial Council of Cavite, which would later be the most successful council of the society. The Filipino scholar Maximo Cala reports that Basa yielded the presidency to Bonifacio in 1894 because of a dispute over the usefulness of the initiation rites and Bonifacio's handling of the society's butts. Basa contested Bonifacio's practice of lending their funds to needy members, complete with promissory notes. Moreover, Basa refused to induct his son into the organization. It was also in 1894 when Emilio Jacinto, a nephew of Dizon who was studying law at the University of Santo Tomas, joined the Katipunan. He intellectualized the society's aims and formulated the principles of the society as embodied in its primer, called Cartilla. It was written in Tagalog and all recruits were required to commit it to heart before they were initiated. Jacinto would later be called the brains of the Katipunan. At the same time, Jacinto also edited Calayan Freedom, the society's official organ, but only one edition of the paper was issued, a second was prepared but never printed due to the discovery of the society. Calayan was published through the printing press of the Spanish newspaper Diario de Manila. This printing press and its workers would later play an important role in the outbreak of the revolution. In 1895, Jose Turiano Santiago, a close personal friend of Bonifacio, was expelled because a coded message of the Katipunan fell into the hands of a Spanish priest teaching at the University of Santo Tomas. Since the priest was a friend of Santiago's sister, he and his half-brother Restituto Javier were suspected of betrayal, but the two would remain loyal to the Katipunan and Santiago would even join the Philippine Revolutionary Forces in the Philippine-American War. Jacinto replaced Santiago as secretary. In early 1895, Bonifacio called a meeting of the society and deposed Basa in an election that installed Bonifacio as president, Jacinto as fiscal, Santiago as secretary, Molina as secretary, Pio Valenzuela and Pantaleon Torres as physicians, and Aguedo del Rosario and Doroteo Trinidad as counselors. On December 31, 1895, another election named Bonifacio as president, Jacinto as fiscal, Santiago as secretary, Molina as secretary, Pio Valenzuela and Pantaleon Torres as physicians, and Aguedo del Rosario and Doroteo Trinidad as counselors. The members of the Supreme Council in 1895 were Bonifacio as president, Valenzuela as fiscal and physician, Jacinto as secretary, and Molina as treasurer. Enrico Pacheco, Pantaleon Torres, Balbino Florentino, Francisco Carrion, and Hermenegildo Reyes were named councillors. Eight months later, in August 1896, the fifth and last Supreme Council was elected to renamed offices. Bonifacio was named Supremo, Jacinto Secretary of State, Plata Secretary of War, Brico Pantas Secretary of Justice, Aguedo del Rosario Secretary of Interior, and Enrice Pacheco Secretary of Finance. Members Over the next four years, the Katipunan founders would recruit new members. By the time the society was uncovered, the American writer James Leroy estimated the strength of the Katipunan at 100,000 to 400,000 members. Historian Teodoro Agoncillo estimated that the membership had increased to around 30,000 by 1896. The Ilocano writer Isabelo de los Reyes estimated membership at 15,000 to 50,000. Aside from Manila, the Katipunan also had sizable chapters in Batangas, Laguna, Cavite, Rizal, Bulacan, Pampanga, Tarlac and Nueva Ecija. There were also smaller chapters in Ilocos Sur, Ilocos Norte, Pangasinan and the Bicol region. The Katipunan founders spent their free time recruiting members. 
For example, Dewa, who was a clerk at a judicial court, was assigned to the office of a justice of the peace in Pampanga. He initiated members in that province as well as Bulacan, Tarlac, and Nueva Ecija. Most of the Katipuneros were plebeian although several wealthy patriots joined the society and submitted themselves to the leadership of Bonifacio. Katipunero, plural, MGA Katipunero, is the demonym of a male member of the Katipunan. Katipunera, plural, MGA Katipunera, refers to female members. Triangle system and grades It was the original plan of Bonifacio to increase the membership of the Katipunan by means of Systemang Patatsalak or triangle system. He formed his first triangle with his two comrades, Teodoro Plata and Ladislao de Wa. Each of them re-instituted Katipunan thoughts into another two new converts. The founder of the triangle knew the other two members, but the latter did not know each other. In December 1892 the system was abolished after proving it to be clumsy and complicated. A new system of initiation, modeled after the Masonic rites was then adopted. When the Katipuneros had expanded to more than a hundred members, Bonifacio divided the members into three grades, the Katipan, literally, associate, which is the lowest rank, the Kawal, soldier, and the Bayani, hero or patriot. In the meeting of the society, Katipan wore a black hood with a triangle of white ribbon having the letters Z, L, L, B, corresponding to the Roman A, N, B, meaning Anak Ng, Bayan, son of the people, see below. Kawal wore a green hood with a triangle having white lines and the letters Z, L, L, B, at the three angles of the triangle, and also wore a green ribbon with a medal with the letter Ka in Bebeyan script above a depiction of a crossed sword and flag. The password was Gom Burza, taken from the names of the three martyrs Mariano Gomez, Jose Burgos and Jacinto Zamora. Bayani, hero, wore a red mask and a sash with green borders, symbolizing courage and hope. The front of the mask had white borders that formed a triangle with three kiloseconds arranged as if occupying the angles of a triangle within a triangle, and with the letters Z, L, L, B, below. Another password was Rizal. Countersigns enabled members to recognize one another on the street. A member meeting another member placed the palm of his right hand on his breast and, as he passed the other member, he closed the hands to bring the right index finger and thumb together. Color designations Catapan. First degree members. Other symbols, black hood, revolver and or bolo. Kawal. Second degree members. Other symbols, green ribboned medallion with Malayan K inscription. Bayani. Third degree members. Other symbols, red hood and sash, with green borders. Catapan could graduate to Kawal class by bringing several new members into the society. A Kawal could become a Bayani upon being elected an officer of the society. Membership Any person who wished to join the Katipunan was subjected to certain initiation rites, resembling those of Masonic rites, to test his courage, patriotism, and loyalty. New recruits underwent the initiation rite three at a time so that no member knew more than two other members of the society. The neophyte was first blindfolded and then led into a dimly lighted room with black curtains where his folded cloth was removed from his eyes. An admonition, in Tagalog, was posted at the entrance to the room. Inside the candle-lit room, they would be brought to a table adorned with a skull and a bolo. There, they would condemn the abuses of the Spanish government and vow to fight colonial oppression. 1. Anyo ang kalagayan natong katagalugan nong unang panahan? In what condition did the Spaniards find the Tagalog land when they came? Expected answer. When the Spaniards came to the Philippine shores on March 16, 1521, the Filipinos were already in a civilized state. They had freedom of government, they had artillery, they had silk dresses, they had carried on commerce with Asia, they had their own religion and their own alphabet. In short, they had liberty and independence. 2. Anyo ang kalagayan sa nagayon? In what condition do they find themselves now? Expected answer. The friars have not really civilized the Filipinos, since enlightenment was contrary to their interests. 
The Filipinos, called Tagalogs by the Katipunan, were merely superficially taught formulas of catechism for which they paid numerous costly fiestas for the benefit of the friars. 3. Anyo ang magiging kalagayan sa derating na panahan. What hopes do they have for the future? Expected answer. With faith, valor, and perseverance, these evils will be remedied. During Bonifacio's time, all of the Filipino people are referred collectively by the Katipunan as Tagalogs, while Philippines is Katagalugan. The next step in the initiation ceremony was the lecture given by the Master of Ceremonies, called Mabalasig, Mabalasig, Terrible Brother, who informed the neophyte to withdraw if he lacked courage since he would be out of place in the patriotic society. If the neophyte persisted, he was presented to the assembly of the brethren, who subjected him to various ordeals such as blindfolding him and making him shoot a supposedly a revolver at a person, or forcing him to jump over a supposedly hot flame. After the ordeals came to final rite the Pacto de Sangre or Blood Compact in which the neophyte signed the following oath with the blood taken from his arm. He was then accepted as a full-pledged member, with a symbolic name by which he was known within Katipunan circles. Bonifacio's symbolic name was Mapagasa, Jacinto was Pinkian and Artemio Ricarte was Vibora. Admission of women to the society At first, Katipunan was purely a patriotic society for men. Owing to the growing suspicion of the women regarding nocturnal absences of their husbands, the reduction of their monthly earnings and long hours of work, Bonifacio had to bring them into the realms of the KKK. A section for women was established in the society, to become admitted, one must be a wife, a daughter, or a sister of a male katipunero. It was estimated that from 20 to 50 women had become members of the society. The first woman to become member of the Katipunan was Gregoria de Jesus, wife of Bonifacio. She was called the Lacambini ng Katipunan, princess of the Katipunan. Initially, there were 29 women were admitted to the Katipunan, Gregoria de Jesus, Marina Dizon, President of the Women's Section, Josefa and Trinidad Rizal, sisters of Dr. José Rizal, Angelica López and Delfina Herbosa Natividad, close relatives of Dr. Rizal, Carmen de Rodríguez, Marina Heisen, Benita Rodríguez, Semiona de Remigio, Gregoria Montoya, Agueda Cahabagan, Teresa Magbanua, Trinidad Texan, rendered as mother of Biak na Bato, Nazaria Lagos, Patronica Gamboa, Marcella Agoncillo, Melcora Aquino, the Gran Old Woman of Balintawak, Marta Saldana and Macaria Pongalinan, the women rendered valuable services to the Katipunan. They guarded the secret papers and documents of the society. Whenever the Katipunan held sessions in a certain house, they usually made merry, singing and dancing with some of the men in the living room so that the civil guard were led that there was nothing but a harmless social party within. The women are considered to be members of the Katipunan. Information regarding the women's section were scarce and sometimes conflicting. Teodoro Agoncillo, for example, disregarded Marina Dizon and concluded that Josefa Rizal was the only president of the said section. Gregorio Zaid, on the other hand, mentioned Dizon's presidency in his 1939 publication History of the Katipunan but changed his mind when he adopted Dr. Pio Valenzuela's notion that women members did not elect officers, hence there is no room for president. Foreign members of the Katipunan Attracted by the universal appeal of the Katipunan's cartilia, there were several members who were not native Filipinos at all yet joined the Katipunan and or, later, the Philippine Revolutionary Army PRA, in the spirit of national liberation. Among the foreign-born Katipuneros were, General Juan Kais, an Indian from India, and French mestizo, General José Ignacio Paua who was a full-blooded Chinese and the famous African-American, PRA Captain David Fagan who defected from the Americans to join the Filipinos due to his disgust of racism and imperialism. Notable Katipuneros Andres Bonifacio (1863–1897), Supremo, the founder and the third leader of the Katipunan. Emilio Aguinaldo (1869–1964), first president of the first Philippine Republic, Katipunan's successor. He was also a war general and a leader of the Magdalo faction that led to a lot of notable victories for Katipunan against Spain. 
During his presidency, he ordered the execution of Andres and Procopio Bonifacio in 1897 after the trial. Emilio Jacinto (1875–1899) called as the brains of the Katipunan. He wrote several papers during the revolution, like the Cartilia Primer. Gregoria de Jesus (1875–1943) called as the Lacambini ng Katipunan, Muse of the Katipunan, and nicknamed Aling Oryang. She was the wife of Bonifacio before marrying Julio Nicpil after the former's death. She was also regarded as one of the first women members of the Katipunan. Gregorio del Pilar (1875–1899) entered the Katipunan circle when he joined the First Philippine Republic's army against the Americans. He died during the Battle of Tarad Pass. Pio del Pilar (1860–1931), the leader of the Matagumpay chapter, one of the closest officers of Andres Bonifacio as the newly revolutionary government was established. He was one of the officers who advised Aguinaldo to change the commutation banishment to execution of Andres and Procopio Bonifacio. Lacerio Geronimo (1855–1924), Aguinaldo's war general during Philippine-American War. Vicente Lucban (1860–1916), Americans regarded him to be the mastermind of the bloody Balangiga massacre in 1901 during Philippine-American War. Miguel Malvar y Carpio (1865–1911), commander of the Katipunan and became a general of the First Philippine Republic. Macario Sake head of Katipunan in Trozo, Manila. Future founder of Republica ng Katagalugan that would oppose American occupation in the Philippines. Pisiana Rizal, the older brother of national hero Jose Rizal, he was also a personal friend of Padre Jose Burgos in his youth. He joined the Katipunan years before Jose's return from Dapitan. Manuel Tinio (1877–1924), youngest general of the Katipunan and the First Philippine Republic, he later became the governor of Nueva Ecija from 1907 to 1909. Aurelio Tolentino, Julian Felipe (1832–1835), composer of Looping Hinarang, teacher and member of La Liga Filipina, he later served as legal advisor to the Katipunan. His tenacious ability in argumentative reasoning earned him the nickname, Demente Viejo, among the colonial principalia. In spite of being devout Catholic, Carpio, like other Filipino revolutionaries, was a member of the Freemasons before the formation of the Katipunan. In Manila, Julian ran a private law school which many of his personal socio-political ideals succeeded to his students. Notable Katipuneros under his tutelage was Gregorio Aglipay and Miguel Malvar. Literature of the Society Written works During Katipunan's existence, literature flourished through prominent writers of the Katipunan, Andres Bonifacio, Emilio Jacinto and Dr. Pio Valenzuela. Each of the three's works were stirring literature of patriotism and are aimed to spread the revolutionary thoughts and ideals of the society. Bonifacio works. Probably one of the best works done inside the Katipunan was written by Andres Bonifacio, the Pag Ibig Sa Tinabuang Lupa, Love of Fatherland, a poem of sincere patriotic sentiment. Pag Ibig was published in the Calayan only issue of January 1896 under his nom de plume Agapito Bagambayan. According to Manuel Artigas y Cuerva, the name Agapito Bagambayan was a corruption of combination Agap Ito, Bagambayan, which, if translated from Tagalog to English word by word, means, the new nation is here, and ready. There is no known original source of Pag Ibig, especially that there is no surviving Calayan issue. The two available texts accessible reprinted through books is the one published by José P. Santos in 1935. The other one, with familiar discrepancies to Santos' print, was archived in military annals of Madrid, after Rizal's execution at Bagambayan on December 30, 1896, Bonifacio wrote the first Tagalog translation of the former's Mi Ultimo Adios final farewell, in which he gave the name Pahamacas farewell. He also wrote the prose Katunkalang Gagawin ng Mgazll. 
b. Duties of the Sons of the People, that was never published because he believed that Jacinto's Cartilia was superior than his. Bonifacio also wrote Ang de Patmabatid ng Mga Tagalog, What the Tagalogs Should Know, which is a politic historical essay, Jacinto works. Emilio Jacinto is considered the brains of the Katipunan, later the revolution. His poetical masterpiece, written in Laguna on October 8, 1897, was A la Patria, To My Fatherland, with an inspiring melody paralleled from Rizal's Mi Ultimo Adios he also wrote a touching ode entitled A Mi Madre, To My Mother. His masterpiece in prose, the Cartilla Cartilia Primer, became the Bible of the Katipunan, see below. His other prose writing was Livenog at Dilim, Light and Darkness, a series of articles on human rights, liberty, equality, labor, government, and love of country. His nom de plume was Demis Allah. Valenzuela works. Dr. Pio Valenzuela was a medical doctor by profession. In 1896, during the first publication of Calayan, Valenzuela assisted Bonifacio and Jacinto in editing the newspaper. He also wrote Catwaran, Is It Fair?, which described the cruelties of the Spanish priest and civil guards of San Francisco del Monte now in Quezon City, on a helpless village lieutenant. He also collaborated with Bonifacio in writing the article Sa Mga Kababayan, To My Countrymen, an essay addresses to the motherland. His nom de plume was Madling Away. During the infamous cry of Balintawak, Valenzuela had the position as physician general of the Katipunan. Calayan Calayan, Liberty, Freedom, was the official organ and newspaper of the Katipunan. It was first published March 1896, even though its masthead was dated January 1896, the first Calayan issue has never been followed. In 1895, the Katipunan bought an old hand press with the money generously donated by two Visayan co-patriots Francisco del Castillo and Candido Aban who returned to the country after working as shell and pearl divers in Australia and had some money from a lottery win. They bought the press and a small quantity of types from Antonio Salazar's Bazar del Cisna on Calle Corrido, and del Castillo transported it to the house of Andres Bonifacio in Santa Cruz, Manila. On January 1, 1896, Valenzuela accepted the position as the Katipunan fiscal in exchange of Bonifacio's consent to send the printing press on his house in Calle de Levesers, San Nicolas, Manila, so that he could assist and edit a monthly publication which would be the Katipunan's main organ. Bonifacio agreed, and on mid-January, the press was delivered in San Nicolas. The name Calayan was suggested by Dr. Pio Valenzuela, which was agreed both by Bonifacio and Emilio Jacinto. Even though Valenzuela was chosen to become the editor of the organ, they all decided to use the name of Marcelo H. del Pilar as its editor. To fool the Spanish authorities, the Calayan was also decided to carry a false masthead stating that it was being printed in Yokohama, Japan, that very same month, January 1896, the publication of Calayan began. Valenzuela expected to complete it by the end of the month and so it was dated as such. The existence of the press was kept in utmost secrecy. Under the supervision of Valenzuela, two printers, Faustino Duque, a student from Colegio de San Juan de Latran, and Ulpiano Fernandez, a part-time printer at El Comercio, printed the revolutionary literature of the society in Calayan. When Valenzuela was appointed the physician general of the Katipunan, he passed on his editorial duties to Jacinto. Jacinto edited the articles after his pre-law classes in University of Santo Tomas. Since the press was in the old orthography and not in the new, Germanized alphabet, as called by the Spaniards, there were no Tagalog letters such as K, W, H, and Y. To solve this problem, Jacinto obliged his mother, Josefa Dizon, to buy typefaces that resembled such letters. The typefaces used in its printing were purchased from publisher Isabelo de los Reyes, but many were taken surreptitiously from the presses of the Diario de Manila by Filipino employees who were also members of the Katipunan. According to Valenzuela, the printing process was so laborious that setting eight pages required two months to complete. 
For weeks, Jacinto, Duque and Fernandez and sometimes Valenzuela took turns in preparing the pages of the Calayan, which was approximately 9 by 12 inches in size. In March 1896, the first copies of the January 1896 issue were secretly circulated with about 2,000 copies, according to Valenzuela. According to Epifanio de los Santos, only 1,000 copies were printed, 700 were distributed by Bonifacio, 300 by Aguinaldo, and some 100 by Valenzuela himself. The first issue contained a supposed editorial done by Del Pilar, which, in fact, were done by Jacinto himself. It also included Bonifacio's Pag Ibig Sa Tinabuang Lupa, Valenzuela. S. Catwaran, and several works that exposed Spanish abuses and promoted patriotism. Copies spread to nearby Manila provinces, including Cavite, Morong, now Rizal, Caloacan, and Malabon. Surprised by this initial success, Jacinto decided to print a second issue that would contain nothing but his works. In August 1896, the second issue was prepared. It was during this time that Spanish authorities began to grow wary of anti-government activities and, suspecting the existence of a subversive periodical in circulation, see below, raided the place where Calayan was being printed, at No. 6 Clavel Street, San Nicolas, Manila. Fortunately, the printers Duque and Fernandez were warned in time, destroyed the incriminating molds and escaped. Therefore, Spanish authorities never found any evidence of the Calayan. Cartilia in Katipunan The teachings of the Katipunan were embodied in a document entitled Cartilia in Katipunan, a pamphlet printed in Tagalog language. Copies of which were distributed among the members of the society. Cartilia was written by Emilio Jacinto, and later revised by Emilio Aguinaldo. The revised version consists of 13 teachings, though some sources, such as the one provided by Philippine Centennial Commission, list only 12. The term cartilia was derived from Spanish cartilla, which was a primer for grade school students before going to school at that time. Language and alphabet According to Filipino writer and historian Hermenegildo Flores, the official language of the Katipunan is Tagalog, and uses an alphabet nearly similar to Spanish alphabet but has different meaning and the way it was read was changed. Diacritics were added, to emphasize the existence of ng and mga on Tagalog orthography. The following is an excerpt from Flores Cartilang Makabayan, MGA Tanong at Sagat UKOLK Andres Bonifacio at Sa KKK, English, Nationalist Primer, Questions and Answers about Andres Bonifacio and KKK, Manila, 1922. 30. Anong wika ang ginagamit ng, mg, a acute kasapi sa katipunan? Ang Tagalog, n, guni. T ang kahulugan ng, ilang titik ng, abakadang kastila i iniba sa kaniling pagsulat ng, mg, a acute kasalatan at gayan din sa paglagda ng kaniling mg, a acute sagasag. Ang titik na a i janawang z, ang c at q i janawang k, ang i i n, ang l at l l i, j ang m i v, ang n i l l, ang o i c at ang u i x. Ang f, j, v, x at z ing pabakadang kastila i at tinawil pagka. T Hindi Kailan, Gon, Sa Malibanag na Ulat I Ganito Ang Abacada, Alphabeto, Ng. Katipunan. Kung Itudalad Sa Abacada Ng, Wiking Castilla. Rough Translation 30. What is the language used by the members of the Katipunan? Tagalog, however, the meanings of some letters from the Spanish alphabet have been changed. The letter A becomes Z. C and Q become K. The letter I is N. The letters L and LL are J. Letter M is V. Letter N is LL. Letter O is C and letter U is X. The letters F, J, V, X and Z are not needed, and unused. 
Presented below is the Katipunan alphabet, when compared to the Spanish alphabet. Preparation for the revolution Attempt to seek Rizal support The night when Governor-General Eulogio Despugil exiled Dr. José Rizal to Dapitan, Katipunan was discovered. In a secret meeting of the Katipunan by a small creek named Bitakang Manic, later known as Parian Creek, now nearly extinct, near Pasig on May 4, 1896, Bonifacio and his counselors decided to seek the advice of Rizal regarding a decision to revolt. Bonifacio delegated Dr. Pio Valenzuela as the Katipunan's emissary to Dapitan. This was done in order to inform Rizal of Katipunan's plan to launch a revolution and, if possible, a war against Spain. By the end of May 1896, Valenzuela had visited and interviewed Rizal in Dapitan. As cover, Valenzuela was accompanied by a blind man named Raimundo Mata. Since Rizal is an ophthalmologist, Valenzuela arrived in Dapitan on June 21, 1896, where Rizal welcomed him. After supper, Valenzuela told him his real purpose and the necessity of securing Rizal. S. Support. According to Valenzuela, Rizal only answered, Puig, Puig. Iya. Why Makasasama sa bayang Pilipino? No, no. That will harm the Filipino nation. Rizal objected to Bonifacio's audacious plan to plunge the country into a bloody revolution. He believed it was premature for two reasons. The people are not ready for a massive revolution, and arms and funds must first be collected before raising the cry of revolution. Because of this notion, Valenzuela made another proposal to Rizal, to rescue him. Rizal disapproved of this plan, because he had given his word of honor to the Spanish authorities, and he did not want to break it. Instead, Rizal advised Valenzuela to persuade wealthy Filipinos, so that they can solicit funds, where he recommended an elite army officer named Antonio Luna to be Katipunan's war general, should a revolution break out. According to Valenzuela's statement to the Spanish authorities, they almost quarreled over the matter and Valenzuela left the following day instead of staying for a month as originally planned, when Valenzuela returned to Manila and informed the Katipunan of his failure to secure Rizal's sanction. Bonifacio, furious, warned Valenzuela not to tell anyone of Rizal's refusal to support the impending uprising. However, Valenzuela had already spread the word, so that much fund proposals to the society were cancelled. Despite Rizal's rejection, the Katipunan was already trying to address its arms supply problem and had taken steps to smuggle in weapons from abroad. At his trial, Rizal denied that he knew Valenzuela, saying only that he met him first at Dapitan and that he considered him a good friend because of what Valenzuela showed to him and his appreciation of medical tools Valenzuela gave to him. He also said that this was the last time they met. Attempt to solicit Japan's aid Despite Rizal's rejection of an armed revolution, Bonifacio continued to plan for an armed conflict with Spain. The Katipunan cast its eyes on Japan, which loomed then as the probable champion of Asian liberties against Western oppression at the time. In May 1896, after Valenzuela S. Visit to Rizal, a delegation of Katipunan members, headed by Jacinto and Bonifacio, conferred with a visiting Japanese naval officer and captain of a Japanese ship, named Congo, and the Japanese consul at a Japanese bazaar in Manila. The interpreter, a friend of Valenzuela, was Jose Moritero Tagawa who was married to a Filipino woman of Bacaui, Bulacan. After the usual exchange of courtesies, Jacinto submitted the Katipunan Memorial for the Emperor of Japan in which the Filipinos prayed for Japanese aid in their projected revolution. So that the light of liberty that illuminates Japan may also shed its rays over the Philippines. It was with good reason that the Katipunan solicited Japan's aid and alliance. Japan had been friendly to the Filipinos since the Spanish colonial era. Many Filipinos who had fled from Spanish persecution had been welcomed there and given full protection of Japanese laws. Bonifacio tried to purchase arms and ammunition from Japan, but failed due to lack of funds and the uncovering of the Katipunan. Jose Dizon was part of the committee that the Katipunan formed to secure arms from Japan with the connivance of the Japanese ship captain. Three months later, however, the Katipunan was uncovered and Dizon was among the hundreds who were arrested for rebellion. 
Discovery As the Katipunan was busy preparing for the revolt, various denunciations regarding its existence reached the Spanish authorities. On July 5, 1896, Manuel Sitiar, a Spanish lieutenant of the Guardia Civil stationed at Pasig, reported to Governor General Ramon Blanco the mysterious activities of certain natives who had been gathering arms and recruiting men for some unknown purposes. On August 13, 1896, Fr. Agustin Fernandez, an Augustinian curate of San Pedro, Makati, wrote to Don Manuel Luengo, the civil governor, mayor, of Manila, denouncing anti-Spanish meetings in his parish. The Katipunan was finally discovered by the Spanish authorities six days after Fr. Fernandez's letter to Luengo. On early August 1896, Teodoro Patino and Apolonio de la Cruz, both working for the Diario de Manila printing press leading newspaper during those times, had undergone misunderstanding regarding wages. Press foreman de la Cruz and typesetter Patino fought over salary increase of two pesos. De la Cruz tried to blame Patino for the loss of the printing supplies that were used for the printing of Calayan. In retaliation, Patino revealed the secrets of the society to his sister, Honoria Patino, an inmate nun at the Mandaluyong Orphanage. That afternoon, on August 19, 1896, Honoria grew shocked and very upset to the revelation. The mother portress of the orphanage, Sor, Sister Teresa de Jesus saw Honoria crying so she approached her. Honoria told everything she heard from her brother. At around 6.15 p.m. that day, Sor Teresa called Patino and advised him to tell everything he knew about the Katipunan through confession to Fr. Mariano Gil, controlled by his fear of hell, Patino went to Fr. Gil, an Augustinian parish curate of the Tondo convent. Though he is willed to tell anything about the Katipunan, Patino confessed that a lithographic stone was hidden in the press room of the Diario de Manila, which was used by the Society for Printing Receipts. He also said that aside from the lithographic stone, there were also documents of membership, that uses member. S. Blood for Signing, hidden, together with a picture of Dr. José Rizal and several daggers that was made for the Katipunero employees of the newspaper, alarmed by the stunning truth of existence of a secret society, Fr. Gil, accompanied by local Spanish authorities, searched the printing office of Diario de Manila and found the incriminating evidence. They also found de la Cruz in possession of a dagger used in Katipunan initiation rites and some list of new accepted members. After the arrest, Fr. Gil rushed to Governor General Blanco to denounce the revolutionary plot of the Katipunan. The Spanish unleashed a crackdown and arrested dozens of people, where many innocent citizens were forced to go to Fort Santiago, Patino's alleged betrayal has become the standard version of how the revolution broke out in 1896. In the 1920s, however, the Philippine National Library commissioned a group of former Katipuneros to confirm the truth of the story. José Turiano Santiago, Bonifacio's close friend who was expelled in 1895, denied the story. He claimed that Bonifacio himself ordered Patino to divulge the society's existence to hasten the Philippine Revolution and preempt any objection from members. Historian Teodoro Agoncillo gives a differing version of events, writing that Patino revealed the secrets of the society to his sister, Honoria, following on a misunderstanding with de la Cruz, another society member who worked with him in the Spanish owned Diario de Manila periodical. Honoria, an orphanage inmate, was upset at the news and informed Sor Teresa, the orphanage Madre Portera, who suggested that Patino tell all to Fr. Gil. On August 19, Patino told Fr. Gil what he knew of the secret society. Fr. Gil and the owner of the Diario de Manila searched the printing shop, discovering the lithographic stone used to print Katipunan receipts. After this discovery, the locker of Policarpio Turla, whose signature appeared on the receipts, was forced open and found to contain a dagger, the rules of the society, and other pertinent documents. These were turned over to the Guardia Civil, leading to the arrest and conviction on charges of illegal association and treason of some 500 prominent men. In another version, the existence of the Katipunan became known to the authorities through Patino, who revealed it to the general manager, Lafont. Patino was engaged in a bitter dispute over pay with de la Cruz and exposed the Katipunan to Lafont, in retaliation. 
Lafont led a Spanish police lieutenant to the shop and the desk of de la Cruz, where they found Katipunan paraphernalia such as a rubber stamp, a little book, ledgers, membership oaths signed in blood, and a membership roster of the Magiganti chapter of the Katipunan. Revolution When the Katipunan leaders learned of the arrests, Bonifacio called an assembly of all provincial councils to decide the start of the armed uprising. The meeting was held at the house of Apollonio Samson at a place called Kangkong in Balintawak. About 1,000 Katipuneros attended the meeting but they were not able to settle the issue. They met again at another place in Balintawak the following day. Historians are still debating whether this event took place at the yard of Melcora Aquino or at the house of her son Juan Ramos. The meeting took place either on August 23 or August 24. It was at this second meeting where the Katipuneros in attendance decided to start the armed uprising and they tore their cedulas, residence certificates and identity papers, as a sign of their commitment to the revolution. The Katipuneros also agreed to attack Manila on August 29, but Spanish civil guards discovered the meeting and the first battle occurred with the Battle of Pasong Tamo. While the Katipunan initially had the upper hand, the Spanish civil guards turned the fight around. Bonifacio and his men retreated toward Marikina via Balara, now in Quezon City. They then proceeded to San Mateo, in the province now called Rizal, and took the town. The Spanish, however, regained it three days later. After regrouping, the Katipuneros decided not to attack Manila directly but agreed to take the Spanish powder magazine and garrison at San Juan. On August 30, the Katipunan attacked the 100 Spanish soldiers defending the powder magazine in the Battle of San Juan del Monte or Battle of Pinaglabanan. About 153 Katipuneros were killed in the battle, but the Katipunan had to withdraw upon the arrival of Spanish reinforcements. More than 200 were taken prisoner. At about the same time, Katipuneros in other suburban Manila areas, like Caloocan, San Pedro de Tunisan, now Makati City, Pateros and Taguig, rose up in arms. In the afternoon of the same day, the Spanish governor Gen. Camilo de Palavieja declared martial law in Manila and the provinces of Cavite, Laguna, Batangas, Bulacan, Pampanga, Tarlac and Nueva Ecija. The Philippine Revolution had begun. In Bulacan, the Bulacan Revolutionary Movement were attacked by the strongest artillery forces ever converged in the capital town of Bulacan. This subsequently led to the Battle of San Rafael, where Gen. Anacleto Enriquez and his men were surrounded and attacked in the Church of San Rafael. The Battle of Cacarong de Sili Pondi, Bulacan played a vital and historical role in the fight for Philippine independence. Pondi is known for the Real de Cacarong de Sili Shrine, Anang Filipina Shrine, the site of the bloodiest battle in Bulacan, where more than 3,000 Katipunero revolutionaries died. Likewise, it is on this site where the Republic of Real de Cacarong de Sili of 1896, one of the first Philippine revolutionary republics, was established. It was in Cacarong de Sili, which about 6,000 Katipuneros from various towns of Bulacan headed by Brigadier General Eusebio Roque, better known as My Strong Cibio, or Damabungo. See list of Filipino generals in the Philippine Revolution and the Philippine-American War, that the Cacarong Republic was organized shortly after the cry of Pugad Lawn, referred to as the cry of Balintawak. Kakarong Republic History and researchers, as well as records of the National Historical Commission, tells that the Kakarong Republic was the first and truly organized revolutionary government established in the country to overthrow the Spaniards antedating event the famous Malolos Republic and the Biak na Bato Republic. In recognition thereof, these three republics Established in Bulacan have been incorporated in the seal of the province of Bulacan. According to available records including the biography of General Gregorio del Pilar entitled Life and Death of a Boy General written by Teodoro Cala, former director of the National Library of the Philippines, a fort was constructed at Cacarong de Sili. That was like a miniature city. It had streets, an independent police force, a musical band, a factory of falconets, bolos and repair shops for rifles and cartridges. 
the Kakarong Republic had a complete set of officials with Canuto Villanueva as Supreme Chief and My Strong Cibio. Eusebio Roque as Brigadier General of the Army. The fort was attacked and totally destroyed on January 1, 1897 by a large Spanish force headed by the Commandant Olagar Feliu. Del Pilar was only a lieutenant at the time and the Battle of Cacarong de Sili was his baptism of fire. This was where he was first wounded and escaped to nearby Barangay. Manadal. The Cacarong Lodge No. 168 of the Legionarios del Trabajo, named in memory of the 1,200 Katipuneros who perished in the battle, erected a monument named the Anang Filipina Shrine, Mother Philippines Shrine, in 1924 in the barrio of Kakarong of Pondi, Bulacan. The actual site of the Battle of Kakarong de Sili is now a part of the barangay of Real de Kakarong. No less than one of the greatest generals in the Philippines' history, General Emilio Aguinaldo who became first Philippine president visited this sacred ground in the late 1950s. Spanish response Even before the discovery of the Katipunan, Rizal applied for a position as doctor in the Spanish army in Cuba in a bid to persuade the Spanish authorities of his loyalty to Spain. His application was accepted and he arrived in Manila to board a ship for Spain in August 1896, shortly before the secret society was exposed. But while Rizal was en route to Spain, the Katipunan was unmasked and a telegram overtook the steamer at Port Said, recalling him to the Philippines to face charges that he was the mastermind of the uprising. He was later executed by musketry on December 30, 1896 at the field of Bagambayan, now known as Luneta. While Rizal was being tried by a military court for treason, the prisoners taken in the Battle of Pinaglabanan Sancho Valenzuela, Ramon Peralta, Modesto Sarmiento, and Eugenio Silvestre were executed on September 6, 1896 at Bagambayan. Six days later, they also executed the 13 martyrs of Cavite at Fort San Felipe Fort in Cavite. The Spanish colonial authorities also pressed the prosecution of those who were arrested after the raid on the Diario de Manila printing press, where they found evidence incriminating not only common folk but also wealthy Filipino society leaders. The Bicol martyrs were executed by firing squad on January 4, 1897 at Bagambayan. They were Manuel Abella, Domingo Abella, priests Inocencio Herrera, Gabriel Prieto and Severino Diaz, Camio Jacob, Tomas Prieto, Florencio Lerma, Macario Valentin, Cornelio Mercado and Mariano Melgarejo. They arrested and seized the properties of prominent businessmen Francisco Roxas, Teleforo Chuidian and Jacinto Limjap. While there may be circumstantial evidence pointing to Chuidian and Limjap as financiers of the revolution, the record showed no evidence against Roxas except that he was involved in funding the propaganda movement. Even Mariano Ponce, another leader of the propaganda movement, said the arrest of Roxas was a fatal mistake. Nonetheless, Roxas was found guilty of treason and shot on January 11, 1897 at Bagambayan. Roxas was executed with Numeriano Adriano, José Dizon, Domingo Franco, Moises Salvador, Luis Inciso Villarreal, Braulio Rivera, Antonio Salazar, Ramón P. Padilla, Faustino Villarreal and Faustino Monulic. Also executed with the group were Lieutenant Benedicto Najaga and Corporal Geronimo Cristobal, both of the Spanish Army. On February 6, 1897, Apolonio de la Cruz, Roman Bassa, Teodoro Plata, Vicente Molina, Hermenegildo de los Reyes, Jose Trinidad, Pedro Nicodemus, Feliciano del Rosario, Gervasio Sampson, and Doroteo Dominguez were also executed at Bagambayan. But the executions, particularly Rizal's, only added fuel to the rebellion, with the Katipuneros shouting battle cries. Mabuhe ang Katagalugan. Long live the Tagalog nation. Katagalugan, Tagalog nation, being the Katipunan term for the Philippines, and Mabuhe si Dr. Jose Rizal. Long live Dr. Jose Rizal. To the Katipuneros, Rizal was the honorary president of the Katipunan. Schism, transfer of authority and dissolution 
In the course of the revolution against Spain, a split developed between the Magdawing faction, led by Gen. Mariano Alvarez, and the Magdalo faction, led by Gen. Baldomero Aguinaldo, cousin of General Emilio Aguinaldo, both situated in Cavite. At a convention in Tejeros, Cavite, the revolutionaries assembled to form a revolutionary government. There, Bonifacio lost his bid for the presidency of the revolutionary government to Emilio Aguinaldo, who was in Pasong Santal, fighting the Spanish forces and instead was elected Secretary of the Interior. When members of the Magdalo faction tried to discredit him as uneducated and unfit for the position, Bonifacio declared the results of the convention as null and void, speaking as the supremo of the Katipunan. Despite this, Aguinaldo took his oath of office as president the next day in Santa Cruz de Malabon, present-day Tanza, in Cavite, as did the rest of the officers, except for Bonifacio. Andres Bonifacio and his brother Procopio were later arrested due to alleged incidents in Indong and, upon the orders of the Council of War and approved by Gen. Aguinaldo, they were both executed on May 10, 1897, at Mount Buntis in Maragondon, Cavite. He and his brother were buried in an unmarked grave. The Katipunan Revolution led to the eventual establishment of the First Philippine Republic. The Philippine Republic, more commonly known as the First Philippine Republic or the Malolos Republic, was a short lived nascent revolutionary government in the Philippines. It was formally established with the proclamation of the Malolos Constitution on January 23, 1899 in Malolos, Bulacan, and endured until the capture of Emilio Aguinaldo by the American forces on March 23, 1901 in Palanan, Isabela, which effectively dissolved the First Republic. The United States eventually destroyed the First Philippine Republic in the Philippine-American War. Afterwards, the Americans exterminated any remaining vestige of the Katipunan. See also Philippine Revolutionary Army Battle of Imus Battle of Binacayan Dalahican Battle of Zapote Bridge 1897 Battle of Perez de Smariñas Spanish-American War Malolos Congress Philippine Declaration of Independence First Philippine Republic Philippine-American War Armed Forces of the Philippines Military History of the Philippines Philippine Commonwealth Army Philippine Army Luna Sharpshooters References Notes and citations Published works Agoncillo, Teodoro C. History of the Filipino People, 8th ed. Quezon City, Garotech Publishing. ISBN 978-971-8711-06-4. Agoncillo, Teodoro C. The Revolt of the Masses, The Story of Bonifacio and the Katipunan. Quezon City, University of the Philippines Press. Artigas y Cuerva, Manuel, 1911. Andres Bonifacio y el Katipunan. La Vanguardia, Manila. Borromeo Bueller, Soledad Masangay, 1998. The Cry of Balintawak, A Contrived Controversy. Ateneo de Manila University Press. ISBN 978-971-550-278-8. Cruz, Hermenegildo, November 16, 1922. Tomiko I. Camacho, Jerome Espinoza Baladad and PG Distributed Proofreaders, ed. Cartilyang Makabayan, MGA Tanong at Sagat UKOLK Andres Bonifacio at Sa KKK, e-book reproduction from Project Gutenberg, 1, in Tagalog, Internet, Project Gutenberg ed. Manila, Guillermo Masangay, Alvarado Street, Brigi. 535, Manila. Dewa, Ladislao, December 24, 1926. Andres Bonifacio y el Katipunan. La Opinion. Manila. Fernandez, Leandro H. 1926. The Philippine Republic. New York, Columbia University Press. 
Fernandez, Leandro H. 1930. Autobiography of Gregoria de Jesus. Philippine Magazine. Manila. Reynaldo, Ailedo, 1998. Filipinos and their Revolution, Event, Discourse, and Historiography. Ateneo de Manila University Press. Guerrero, Milagros C. 1996. Balintawak, The Cry for a Nationwide Revolution. Suliap Cultura, Manila, National Commission for Culture and the Arts. Halili, Maria Christine N. 2004. Philippine History. Manila, Rex Book Store. ISBN 978-971-23-3934-9. Jesus Nick Pill, Gregoria, 1932. MGA Tala ng Aking Buhay at MGA Ulat ng Katipunan. Published by Jose P. Santos. Kala, Maximo M. The Development of Philippine Politics, 1872-1920, Manila, Oriental Commercial Co. Inc., 1926, Reprint ed., Manila, Solar Publishing Corp., 1986. Kala, Teodoro M., 1925. The Philippine Revolution. Manila, Manila Book Store Company. Reyes, Isabelo de Los, 1899. La Sensational Memoria Sobre la Revolución Filipina. In Spanish. Madrid, Tip, Lit, de J. Corrales. Ratana, Wenceslao E. 1897. Archivo del Biblio Filipino. Madrid. Ratana, Wenceslao E. 1907. Vida y Escritos del Dr. José Rizal. At Google Books. Retana, Wenceslao. Vida y Escritorios de Dr. José Rizal. Madrid, 1907. Ricarte, Artemio, 1926. The Hispano-Philippine Revolution. Yokohama. This book was published by Ricarte himself, includes his memoirs on the Philippine Revolution. St. Clair, Francis, 1902. Kataz Tossing Kagaling Galanging Katipunan Nong Manga Anak Nong Bayan. Manila. Archived from the original on 2 January 2009. Sagmit, Rosario S., Sagmit Mendoza, Lords, 2007. The Filipino Moving Onward 5, 2007 ed. Rex Bookstore, Inc. ISBN 978-971-23-4154-0. Santos, Epifanio de los, 1918. Andres Bonifacio. The Philippine Review. Santos, Epifanio de los, 1961. The Trial of Rizal. Horacio de la Costa, S.J. Quezon City, Ateneo de Manila University Press. Santos, Jose P., 1930. Kung Sino si Jacinto. Pagkakesa. Woods, Damon L. 2006, 2006. The Philippines, A Global Studies Handbook. ABC Clio. ISBN 978-1-85109-675-6. Zaid, Gregorio F. 1984. Philippine History and Government. National Bookstore Printing Press. Zaid, Gregorio F. 1957. Philippine Political and Cultural History, The Philippines Since the British Invasion. 2, 1957 Revised ed. Manila, McCullough Printing Company. Zaid, Gregorio, November 26, 1932. The Women of the Katipunan. Philippines Free Press, Manila. Zaid, Gregorio F., 1973. Manila During the Revolutionary Period. Manila, National Historical Commission, citing a letter sent to him by Pio Valenzuela dated December 19, 1931. Zaid, Gregorio, 1939. History of the Katipunan. Loyal Press, Manila. Zaid, Gregorio F., 1931. Documentary History of the Katipunan Discovery. Manila. Zaid, Gregorio, October 25, 1930. The Rise and Fall of the Katipunan Press. 
The Sunday Tribune Magazine, Manila. The Catholic Historical Review, Washington, D.C. 4, 1919. External links Draft of preliminary reading for initiation into the Katipunan Oaths and form of initiation into the Katipunan Society Cardiliang Makabayan pamphlet about the Katipunan written by Hermenegildo Cruz Philippines – Historical Flags to 1899 in Spanish, El Sitio de Baylor, Los Ultimos de Filipinas, the site of Baylor, final locations in the Philippines. Information about Katipunan.